What we're going to make today is a ceramic sphere. Starting off with a regular piece of clay, I don't want to fold it over on itself because I don't want to make air bubbles. So what I'm doing is tapping it on the table evenly on each side to form a brick. After I achieve a brick shape, I'm going to be able to divide it evenly in half. In order to make a sphere, we have to guarantee that we have the same amount of clay on each pinch pot that we'll be using to connect in the center. Taking each cube, we're going to knock it on its corners, turning it into a wheel-like shape. Then I'm going to be using two cupped hands to rotate and kind of smash it into a ball. I like to think of this hand position as the golfer's clap. Remember, our goal is not to fold any air bubbles into the clay, but once we formed two separate spheres of solid clay, we're gonna begin the process of making two pinch pots. Taking your thumb, make sure to insert it into the clay without going through the other side, leaving it about a half inch of clay. Now using the hand motion of a talking duck, we're going to pinch and rotate based on the thumb hole you've created in the past. By rotating and pinching, applying even pressure, we can then begin to rotate and create an even and precise pinch pot that resembles half of a sphere. I'm checking for the evenness of the top, tapping it on the table so it's perfectly flat. Next, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to make an identical pinch pot that will match the other one and come together as a perfect sphere. The next step is to use the serrated rib tool, also known as the potato chip, to score the surfaces where they'll connect. Scoring creates a deep cut in the surface that allows the clay to grab together. Using water, I'm gonna create the slip completing the score and slip cycle. This allows the two pieces to seal the air inside and support it as a sphere. Once you align the two pinch pots, make sure that they're evenly secured by applying gentle but firm pressure on all areas. Notice how I'm using the palms of my hand to cradle each piece together and making sure there's a good seal. The final step can be very satisfying. We're going to seal the bond together using either our thumb or any type of blending tool by scraping clay across the joint. Now we're going to apply a finishing technique using our thumb and the rest of our hands to smooth out any uneven textures we may have created. And there you have it a perfectly round sphere with air holding up the walls inside. Now don't forget, when we make our sculpture, that's not the final step. Any changes you make, the air will keep this ball nice and round, but make sure that after it dries out a little bit, we vent the air before putting it into the kiln. Good job.